Four years ago, we did a teardown of Apple's first smart speaker, the HomePod, and to say that teardown was excruciating would be an understatement. If you talk with anyone who was involved in that teardown, they'll tell you that the cemented together plastic was a nightmare to get apart, and the amount of destruction we inflicted on the device was a sight to see. In the years that followed, dedicated fixers solved the problem of entry into the HomePod, and the repair and refurbishment of them became sort of a cottage industry. Check out the Next Fix YouTube channel for lots of HomePod repair content. He does a great job. Well, today, we have the HomePod 2 on the teardown table. I've got my ultrasonic cutter on standby just in case, and we're going to dig in and see just how much of a repairability nightmare it's going to be. These amazing x-rays from our friends at Creative Electron suggest that the HomePod 2 is built very similarly to the HomePod 1, and I'm encouraged by the number of screws I'm seeing. Maybe Apple didn't use as much glue this time around. Let's start this teardown the same way we did before by peeling up the rubber foot and removing the outer fabric layers. The fabric mesh and its underlying layer are tightened by these knots, and once we untie them, we can unsheath the black plastic pod. Moving the cover out of the way, we see the screws securing the top to the rest of the pod are hidden behind these black caps. After popping them off and removing the screws, it's the moment of truth. Just how hard is it going to be to get this thing open? Very easy, it seems. For the HomePod 2, Apple has seriously dialed back on the adhesive here, making disassembly way easier. The top portion of the pod we just removed holds the logic board, connected to the rest of the pod by a single flex cable. Delitting the board reveals the S7 processor, and flipping the board over we see the various LEDs that produce the light show through the diffuser screen on top. The bottom portion of this pod is home to that massive woofer, and boy can it produce some Base. Check out how much movement it's doing in there, even when the volume isn't maxed. The woofer lifts right out, but it's still attached by a cable to the amplifier board deep down inside the pod. Our handy bendy driver attachment makes a rare appearance to help us reach all the awkwardly placed screws securing the boards down inside the pod. With those removed, I can remove the middle section of the case and get up close and personal with the power supply and amplifier board. Remember, power supply boards like these are dangerous. These capacitors can hold a potentially lethal charge long after the device is unplugged. Do not touch them. The amplifier board is up next and it holds all the audio drivers, filters, and sports this massive heatsink that sits on top of the audio amplifier. A huge heatsink for an audio chip? What's up with that? Well, it turns out Apple's still obsessed about sound, and heat can actually distort audio signals, so this giant heatsink helps keep things cool and clean. Below these boards we find the five tweeters. This year's HomePod has dialed the number of tweeters back from seven in the original, and maybe that has something to do with it being $50 cheaper than the HomePod 1. This little sensor is the humidity sensor that everyone's been talking about. Turns out it's the same one that we found in the HomePod Mini. That's it for the HomePod 2, a surprisingly easy device to dismantle. All the challenges we faced with the original pod have been done away with thanks to the simple choice of using less intense adhesive. That's great news for everyone who's looking to repair their own HomePod, I just hope Apple hasn't snuck any software locks on these parts. We've got some testing to do.